Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Dime with Dina. I'm so excited to be doing this. As all of you know, I have started vlogging, and if you don't know, then please go check out my vlogs. And me and my team are all really hungry all the time, and so they said, Dina, we need some food recipes. So here we are today filming our first food recipe as part of our kind of vlog series. And so we're kicking it off with one of my favorite Omani recipes, which is perfect for celebrations. And I'm currently fasting, Eid is coming up, and so I'm gonna be making this on one of the days. It is called Omani Kabuli. And it's traditionally done with lamb, you could do it with fish or chicken. And it's all about a certain amount of spices that come together to bring you this amazing kind of spiced rice dish with a really slow cooked lamb. And I'm gonna be using lamb shanks for it today. So I'm so excited to show you how it's done. To begin with, we are actually going to need to leave some saffron to kind of brew in some hot water. So grab your pestle and mortar. I know mine is rather huge and interesting looking. And you just wanna give a good, good pinch of some saffron. I actually stole this saffron from my grandmother because she has loads. And just kind of crush it up in your hand. I like two good big pinches. And then the trick to this, which my grandmother actually taught me, is you need some sugar. So you wanna take just a good like half a tablespoon of sugar, add it in with your saffron. And then basically what happens there is when you grind it down into a powder, it actually helps the saffron go further when you're using it. So saffron is expensive, we don't wanna be wasting it. Your sugar and your saffron are inside your mortar. I think that's the mortar, it's just the pestle. Don't know which way around. And you just wanna give it a good old grind. Doesn't have to be too fine. Add your saffron sugar into another bowl. And then we wanna go in with about 400 mils of water or so. And then I have some raisins, which are sitting here, and you can use some other dried fruits, and I do mention that in the full recipe. And you just wanna take about half of this liquid and pour it over. And we are literally going to leave this to sit, and the saffron is just gonna absorb into those raisins, and we will use this right at the end for the final touches of our dish. So for the next part, we are gonna get making our lamb. This is gonna take the longest amount of time and where you're using um, lamb shanks, they really, really need time to kind of make sure that they melt off of that bone. So to begin with, we need to go in with a good glug of olive oil. You can also use a neutral oil, that's completely fine. And then we're gonna throw in our spices and throw in our onions and leave those to just kind of do their thing. We want our onions to slightly sweat before we add in our lamb shanks. And along with all of our whole spices, we are also gonna go in with Bibby's blend, the best blend you will ever find. So our onions and spices are just kind of frying away and our lamb is about ready to go in. So we wanna take each lamb shank and just give them a few little slits just to help it really take in all these amazing flavors. You just want to make enough room to fit them all in. And then just turn up your heat slightly. Let them crisp on one side and then flip them over, crisp on the other, and then they're ready to start boiling away. So the lamb chops are nice and sheared. And the reason I've done them in the pan is just because there's more space to spread out before I move them into my saucepan where they're gonna boil. And don't worry about leaving them to, in there to crisp up too much because we will also put these in the oven. The main reason for doing this is also to let that fat just drip off so that it goes into the stock water. And we're just gonna add them into our saucepan. Ow. Ow. Put them all and then we want to grab everything that's also inside of here and just put it in and then what we want to do is add roughly a liter of water into the saucepan we really want to submerge the lamb shanks under the water Yeah. 
So I have some that I prepared earlier and they are smelling amazing. This is really hard while you're fasting, by the way. It's quite the challenge. And they were, have been cooking for at least three and a half hours. And then on top of that, they were left overnight to continue cooking. So the dried lime and flavors have really, really come through in this one. The lamb chops are ready. And what we want to do next is literally place them inside a baking dish because we're going to roast them just for about half an hour on a really low temperature. And that will just allow them to kind of crisp up slightly. And it's more so that we can put our saffron to use. So we literally want to glaze them with a nice saffron water. And we're going to glaze them about two or three times while they're in the oven. And this will just bring an extra layer of flavor and depth to them. Lamb chops are going straight in the oven at around 140 for half an hour. So one of the reasons I like to use lamb shanks is so that I can get lots of glorious stock water after it's finished boiling. I'm not going to show you how to make rice, but the stock water is for our rice. So taking some freshly washed, freshly washed please, basmati rice. You just want to add it in and I actually keep all of the whole spices, dried limes, everything in there. And you want to keep this in here. You don't have to. Some people don't like to pick out the little bits, but I don't really mind. And you're going to add in all of your rice first. And then you just want to give it a good stir just so that it evenly distributes around with all of those whole spices. So I'm really particular about my rice, so I like to measure my cups exactly. I like to think I'm quite the queen of rice, but don't tell Uncle Roger. Oh! And now I'm going to go in with two more cups of water, just to make up for the two cups of stock water. And there you have it. And you're not going to need any more salt, no more oil. This is going to be such a glorious rice. And actually, traditionally back in Oman, we sometimes make this rice without even making the meat, just because we want all of those flavors every single day. I'm going to place this on to cook, let it do its thing. And then the last thing to make is our topping. For the last part of this dish, we are making the topping. So we have our layer of spiced rice. Then we're going to have this layer, which is basically some caramelized onions with some fabulous chickpeas, along with some coriander, a bit of my grandmother's amazing baharat, and then also some of the saffron raisins that we've left to kind of absorb all the saffron. So literally, we just want to pour in some oil, get those onions on the go and fry everything up. The onions are all caramelized, looking golden and gorgeous, and I'm going with some chickpeas. And by the way, these are one of my favorite chickpea brands. Um, they're just fabulous, and so we like to use fabulous products. Go in with Bibby's Blend. And we just want a little bit of a dash of this, not too much. So as many of you do know, if you are an Instagram follower, and if you're not, go follow me. I am the pomegranate queen, and we actually need a good dash of pomegranate molasses in here. However, the pomegranate McQueen is not on form today and I somehow do not have it in my house, so I'm using some grape molasses instead. And really what we want this for is the sweetness that it brings. And just let that soak up. Now we're adding in those raisins and we're also going to add in the saffron water. And then you're basically going to leave this until that water has evaporated. So while that water is evaporating, just chop up some fresh coriander, get your pomegranate ready, which I do have, and then it will all be good to go. All the elements to our Omani Kabuli are finally ready, and the rice is done. It's looking 
fluffy and fabulous. And I actually ended up putting a tea towel round the lid and this basically just helps steam it a lot better. Um, and now it's come out really, really, really nice. So now it's just time to place it all up. And there you have it, you guys. One gorgeous Omani Kabuli. I think I definitely did my Omani's proud here. And I am so excited for fasting to finish this evening so I can dig in 